Hey guys, and welcome back to Psychic Celluloid Signals. In today's entry into Criterion of the Month series, I'm going to be talking about the American counterculture classic, Easy Rider. Before I say any more, let's take a look at the case itself. Alright, first we'll take a look at the cover. It says the film came out in 1969 and was directed by Dennis Hopper. The art is very fitting. It definitely gives you a good idea of what type of film it is without seeing it. I like the tan background. It sort of reminds me of westerns, which in a way this movie is a western, replacing horses with motorcycles. Let's take a look at the spine. The spine number for this film is 545, and the title is very legible, which is always good for picking out movies on shelves. The back is simple, but the colors are great. I think they're really fitting for the film. As you can see, this copy has a handful of special features. The film within is a new restored HD digital transfer, supervised by director of photography Laszlo Kovacs. There are two audio commentaries, as well as two documentaries entitled Born to be Wild and Easy Rider, Shaking the Cage, and many more special features. The inside of this case looks great as well. On the disc itself, we have a shot of Hopper and Fonda on their bikes. Here, I'll spin that around a little bit. And inside, we have a nice shot from the film as well. The insert that comes inside folds open and has two sides. On this side is a well-written piece called Wild at Heart by Matt Zoller Stites. And it covers some interesting background on the film, the actors, and the director, how it came to be, and what its impact was. It was a great read, being a huge fan of the film. I found this essay is on Criterion's website as well, so I will leave a link in the description for anyone interested, because I'm sure you can't read all those tiny words, and some of them are covered up, so I'll leave that in the description below. On the back are acknowledgments, information on the transfer, some special thanks, a list of the cast, and a little collage of nice stills from the film. All in all, I think this is a nice looking set. Now that we've taken a look at the packaging, I've checked the film out itself. I've seen a couple of different copies of this film, and this is one of the best by far. I know that many of my subscribers aren't from the US, and I would say if you want to see a sampling of the beauty you can find in this country, that would be reason enough to check this film out. So many of the shots in Easy Rider just look so great that this film would have been a pleasure to watch just for the visual aspect alone. But of course, as many of you who've seen this film know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. This film is also a time machine, a way to look back and see the struggles amongst the counterculture in the late 60s. Many believe that the whole the whole film is commentary on the 1960s counterculture. For example, when Fonda says, we blew it, is he just talking about himself and his friend, or the movement as a whole? I personally see a lot of this sort of commentary peppered in throughout the film, but even if you watch it as a story about two drug dealers and their journeys, I think you'll have fun and get a lot out of it. In addition to the film, we get two documentaries. Both cover a range of topics including difficult financial situation, in which they had to shoot the film on a budget of around $360,000, as well as the writing process, Hopper's insistent on recording everything during Mardi Gras for that scene in New Orleans, the interesting methods employed by the cameraman to capture some of the shots, such as the shots on the bikes, and plenty more. These documentaries, in conjunction with the interview with co-founder of BBS Productions, Steve Blonner, where he explains the connection between the film and pop rock group The Monkees, I felt I got a pretty good understanding of the background of this film. In the end, I'd say this Criterion film is a must-have for huge fans of the film, or counterculture films in general. 
It's an iconic American classic, and it's profoundly important to the history of independent filmmaking. I would honestly recommend anyone check this film out once, and if you really like it, you simply cannot go wrong with this copy. If you guys haven't seen this film, let me know what you thought, and if you've seen Criterion's release, what did you think about that? Thank you guys so much for watching this and for your continual support of this new series. Take care.